Moving from Toronto to Calgary can be daunting for some people. It definitely was a little bit for us just because, well, I'm pregnant. Um, so I knew that traveling by car, which was the way that we chose to do it because we have a vehicle, we have a dog. It was ultimately going to be the easiest way for us to get to Calgary. I knew I was going to get swollen. Like my fingers are swollen. My feet are swollen. My legs are swollen. I feel like my face is swollen. Like I'm just, I'm just, a bigger person right now guys just so, a little bit just a little bit so because of that like it was going to be a daunting task but we managed and I feel like because of all the research we did and all the work we put into it um, we did it really well and really seamlessly so today we wanted to share with you what we personally did and what we recommend and then maybe some things to avoid if you decide to travel the same way we did for sure for sure so yeah we we decided to move to calgary from toronto and it was uh it was a daunting task to say the least like yes, you know was. stephanie being very pregnant and you know us only having a small window to make the move happen before the baby came so we needed to get a plan in place and then execute on the plan yeah so you may be thinking if you're also coming from toronto should you go through the states or should you go through canada now there's pros and cons to both we personally chose canada because again i'm pregnant right. and what would happen if oh stephanie went into labor you know like it would be great to be in canada because we don't want to pay arm and a leg for health care if i ended up at a hospital in the mm, states that right? wouldn't be good no so i mean that's why we went the canadian route as well as we have done this um this route before when we first moved out to Toronto, yeah. that's a different story. Yeah, so so the drive from Toronto to Calgary, it's definitely it's a definitely a little bit quicker going through the states because you're kind of going underneath the Great Lakes and as opposed to like all the way around. And yes. if anyone's driven through Ontario before, it's it's a huge province and it takes it like can three take, days. Yeah, depending to get on through it. yeah, depending <laughs> on how many hours you're driving a day, it could take like upwards of three, four days just to make it to the Ontario Manitoba border from Toronto. So Ontario's really big, so if you go through the United States it definitely, I don't know how many hours it cuts, but you're going to get the less windy roads and then kind of like more of those like straight shot um, American uh, highways if you if you go through the state. We had a little bit of time on our hands to take our time and just kind of cruise. We only wanted to drive max like five hours. I think one day, did we do six hours? We did six. We yeah, did we did six hours one day, but that like honest, honestly killed me after i think like the four hour mark i started getting really swollen um just because you're sitting in this upright position and your legs like kind of go numb and your feet go numb and it's just not fun so somebody just drove by with some really loud music don't know if you guys can they're hear having it, a party on having a party. sunday morning having a party. so yeah we we took how many days did we take hun we took seven we took about days. seven days yeah seven days we were driving four to six hours a day and for us that was kind of the happy medium with Steph being pregnant and we just didn't want to be cooped up in a car for too long we wanted to be able to take lots of breaks along the way we wanted to make sure that we you know got to our hotel or Airbnb um, not too late in the day so that way we can relax and just kind of put our feet up and let our dog kind of just chill and not be all cooped up in the car so five four to six hours a day was kind of the sweet spot for us now a recommendation from us to you is that if you're doing a drive whether you're doing it through the states or through canada because we've done it both ways we've done it where we didn't plan at all and then this time around we thoroughly plan my recommendation to you is to plan your final destinations in each place ahead yeah. of time yeah because especially if you have a dog like we do um it <laughs> We've done it before where we've crossed Canada and the States and we didn't plan our final sleeping destination in each spot. Right. And let me tell you, it is more challenging because you're going to get to the point, like, especially if you're like, I'm going to drive as long as I can possibly drive just to like get there. <laughs> and then you come into this place or let's say you miss the city or you miss the town and suddenly you're done. You want to get out of the car, Dan, pull over. I am, I've had enough. Let me out but 
you're nowhere near an Airbnb, you're nowhere near a motel. Yeah. Well, you're going to be driving longer and it sucks. Like, yeah. trust me, it sucks. So really um, try to book these things in advance. Let right. me tell you this time around, we were so chill. It was so much easier. What are you trying to say? The last time was hectic. <laughs> it was so chill this time, guys, because we had a plan. We knew where we were going. We would type it into the GPS. We knew exactly how long right. we, we had to drive. And when we got there, we knew it was dog friendly, which is also important because not all places are. We knew how much we'd be paying that night. We knew what our bills were going to be. We had it all planned out. And that was Fabulous. Yeah, it saved a lot of stress because we've done it in the past where we just kind of said, oh, well, you know, we'll take three, four days to drive from the West Coast to Toronto. And um, yeah, like you don't know where you're going to stay. You end up driving and driving and driving. And then you're when you're tired, you're nowhere near a motel and you have to drive for another hour or two, which it can just be crazy. So do yourself a favor and just kind of figure out how many hours a day you want to drive or how many days you want to take to get from Toronto to Calgary and then book some motels along the way and kind of space out that time frame and then also if you're closer to you know a major town uh, there's lots of Airbnb options as well so if you want to you know avoid motel after motel after motel and then you know stay and kind of split it up well we split it up we did uh, motel Airbnb motel Airbnb so it was nice motels can be kind of boring and lame and kind of you know, not the nicest at times. So it was, Airbnbs, it's yeah. really neat because people pour their heart and soul into right. it for the most part. Not and you got all the amenities. You got you can cook, you can make yourself coffee, tea. Um, you get like a nicer setting. You're not like right off the highway. So definitely recommend uh, booking some Airbnbs along the way but as well. Also, our decision to do Airbnb and motel wasn't just based off of, oh, like, what can we find it was also based on cost so you yeah. can compare the cost, cost um yeah. a lot of times airbnbs will be the cheaper route to go which is fantastic because we honestly prefer them because like dan was saying they're more unique typically yeah we stayed in some pretty beautiful spots yeah. and they were really affordable too because that was one of our main concerns for traveling yeah. across the country exactly. we knew that it could cost us an arm and a leg but we wanted it to be as cheap and as smooth as possible and let me tell you we we did it like, we, we did. did it we did. and never once did i feel like oh my goodness we're spending so much money no i felt like we got here and we stayed on track we stayed within budget and it was fantastic now if we go back to toronto when we're leaving what we did for our stuff because we we're living in a one bedroom condo at the time so we had some things that we wanted to bring here with us probably wondering how did we get all of our stuff to calgary because we you know we're in this our car is a mid-side suv so of course we can't fit everything in there and so you know we decided that we wanted to take a lot of our stuff with us so we ended up hiring a moving company to ship our stuff from toronto to calgary now there's a ton of different options you can use to have your stuff shipped from toronto to calgary we went with one of the more affordable options and that is having a moving company come they grab your stuff they take an inventory of every single item they put it on a truck and then that truck uh, goes to a warehouse where your stuff is offloaded and then from there they put it on a really really big transport truck with other people's stuff now now i know you're probably wondering like oh i don't want my stuff you know in with other people but i can assure you like they they have barcodes and scanners that are on each item that you have so if anything gets lost they'll be able to find it within their system so yeah they can track yeah. it yeah. Because I was concerned about this. We had baby stuff coming because we had a baby shower before we moved, you know, wedding things. We did that before we moved. Um, and, you know, a lot of personal items that mean a lot to us. So, like, to me, that was one of my concerns. Like, and I was asking all these questions, like, well, what happens if you lose it? Like, <laughs> what happens if you give it to someone yeah, else? Because, like, you know, we, we, we have, like, we had a, a stroller that we had gifted to us that was over a thousand dollar stroller and we were yeah. like oh my goodness we don't you know we don't trust this with the movers but rest assured they put barcodes on every single item yeah. so it's like all it's not impossible but it's pretty slim to none that your stuff is going to go missing yeah so anyways they put your stuff on a big truck with other people's truck and they ship it 
other people's other yeah, people's other, people's, other stuff. people's stuff and they ship it across the country um depending on what time of year you're moving it could take upwards of anywhere from like three to six weeks to get to the destination so just keep that in mind when you're when you're planning your trip um you know we went with this option because it was definitely one of the more affordable ways to get your stuff from toronto to calgary we did have quite a bit of stuff like we were in a one bedroom yeah. apartment and it's kind of deceiving like after after we ended up like tallying all our stuff and they actually go by weight so it's I, I can't tell you exactly i can't remember how how much exactly it was like per pound um but they go by weight so if you have a lot of heavy stuff um and maybe you don't really need to take it with you so like for example Makes like go up. <laughs> like uh like heavy plates or like cutlery or pots or pans or things like that and you you know you'd rather just buy some new ones once you once you get here to calgary then i would definitely recommend just uh either tossing those or you know giving them away to, yeah like give them away yeah. like salvation army yeah. or yeah just be mindful Value of that Village. yeah because we we ended up we on our initial estimate, we thought we would have around like 4,000 or 3,500 pounds of stuff. And we ended up having like 6,000. So the price ended up going up because of that. But I think that we're happy that all of our stuff, like especially the sentimental things, um, ended up coming with us to um, Calgary. So when we actually got to Calgary, guys, it was the stampede. <laughs> the stampede just happened, just started. So prices naturally would be higher in Calgary for accommodation. So we knew this ahead of time. Thank goodness we looked into it ahead of time because we recognized the prices and we're like, you know what? Let's stay on the outskirts of Calgary for a couple of nights yeah. while we wait for this other Airbnb which is situated in Calgary to open up because that one was booked up until a point. And that one was really cheap and had everything we needed, including a yard for our dog. So we did plan it out. So going back to plan it out, guys, yeah. it, it really does help. It saves you money. Yeah, plan it out. If you're, if you're planning on, especially if you're planning on moving here in the summertime in the busy seasons, kind of get an idea of when you're gonna arrive in Calgary and then depending on when you're gonna get your long-term accommodations, whether you, uh, you know, purchased a house or you're gonna be renting a home when you get here, give yourself a little bit of a buffer. So we rented an Airbnb for a week. Uh, we felt uh, comfortable that our new home that we were gonna be moving into would be ready uh, within that time frame. So we booked uh, that week uh, Airbnb stay here in Calgary, which was the beginning of July, so a high season. We did that like a couple months in advance and it ended up being like 50% cheaper than if you would have like waited. got to, waited and got the airbnb like a week before you got here yeah. or a couple days so we were super happy that we did that and it ended up working out and g giving us like way less stress peace of mind peace yes. of mind peace of mind key. yes especially when your wife is very pregnant peace and, of mind and especially <laughs> when you're traveling though when you're uprooting your life and you're moving across the country it's stressful enough because yeah. you're leaving you know friends family to start a new life to start work here luckily we have family here too so that's great big yeah. plus making new friends here you know you're bringing a dog or you're gonna have a baby you haven't <laughs> i i haven't had a baby before so that's stressful enough it's just yeah yeah if you have any questions about how steph and i moved to calgary whether it's you know, you need a recommendation for a moving company or Airbnbs that we stayed at along the way. Uh, you know, we're an open book. We're happy to help anybody. We know it's a challenging time, uh, you know, moving yourself or moving your family yeah. all the way across the country. And so. it's also hard for us to predict your questions too. So we did our best in this video trying to right. like, explain what we think we would want to know if we were watching it. But of course, if you have additional questions, send us an email or like leave us a comment. We're always happy to get comments and hit the subscribe button if you want to come hang out with us again. We definitely have more to come and we love having you guys here. Until next time. Bye guys.